Welcome back YouTube. My name is Joel Reed and this is SWPL Gaming. Today I received this. This is the RG353M. This is Ambonix. Nothing's wrong with the internet but let me just take a quick second to say thanks to Ambonix for sending me this device. The wonders of editing. Sometimes you get so caught up you forget what you're doing but Ambonix thank you for this device. Latest handheld running the RK3566 chipset takes a while as a mouthful this is the exact same chipset as the 353V and the 353P I'm not just saying that without messing it up <laughs> and as it is a metal device you can expect Ambonix great quality inside of this box so just quickly let's bring up the specs Oh, feel free to pause it as well. The specs are on here, I can't read all of that out, I'm not going to. But what I will mention is, check the link in the description below. And Benix still have their discounts, especially on the RG300X. I've got one right here anyway. I've got this red one, but I kind of want to get the black one as well. So I might just treat myself to that, a nice early Christmas, Christmas present, if you will. And there's various other discounts on there. Just click the link in the description below. Oh, as for the 353M, there will be a link in the description below for that as well. Today is the 7th of November and 7.39 is the time. Let's get into this unboxing. All right, so when we look at the box, here you go. The same black and white, we're used to seeing it go around the box. You can see where things are. You've got your two speakers at the side, which we're gonna obviously look at. What color have I got? I believe it's the deep purple. Ooh, gosh, it's blurry there. Ignore that. <laughs> we'll have a look anyway, but I believe it's the deep purple. What else we got? All the buttons and where they are, layout, look, general outlook of a box. The most important thing is what is inside this box. So let's delve in. Okay, so you've got your original packaging right here and instantly, I mean, even with this device inside the box, you can feel the weight in there so you can feel the quality of it as well and it feels good even inside this. But let's see what else is inside. We have the instruction manual, color, everything is good there. I should show here. This one came with a 64 gig SD card and that's where all the games are gonna be. USB type C cable right here as usual. Your screen wipes, obviously in conjunction with your screen protector. Finally, let's look at this thing. So today you've caught me, I'm in my uniform today. Here we go, take off that. <laughs> yes. I like what I'm seeing already. It feels fantastic. These um, these analog sticks look a bit different. You can see that there's some tech, there's some gradient or texture to it right here, which obviously will add to the grip. The overall aesthetics of it, it looks nice. That this deep purple is a really good color. I like that. Let's go. Let's start off with the front here. So you've got your display. You've also got your D-pad, A, B, X, Y, start, select, your analog sticks are nice and clicky, they feel good. Let's go to the bottom, this is new, you've got your speaker grills right here, TF1 slot, TF2 slot, here you've got your let's just focus that a bit more power button reset button along the top you've got your triggers your L1 R1 L2 R2 and these are a little bit more raised compared to the R1 and the L1 triggers the R2 and L2 are a bit raised so you can distinguish exactly what you're pressing which that's good. Nice and tactile. That's decent. What else have we got here? Headphone jack. Your function button. Really like where they place that. It can be annoying sometimes when it's at the bottom. I don't know about you guys, but that's the one thing. Usually, like, things on the side, they don't bother me. But that function button when it's at the bottom can be 
quite annoying so well placed right here you've got your DC USB type C charging USB type C OTG input right there your HD out and on this side you've got your volume rocker at the back you've got the information of what the device is and you've got your rubber feelers or handles which feel they feel, if it feels as it feels it's pretty good one thing I did notice about the front here interesting there's no ambonic right here I like the brand but I quite like the fact that they've taken it away and it's just at the back now so I like what they've done with that there okay let's do a size comparison real quick let me go and get the, the devices let's see all right I'm just gonna compare it to what I've got here the 353 the 353 V is inside my bag and I'm not going to get it but I've got all of these so let's do a quick comparison we'll start off with the obvious choice what's it like next to the 351 MP it's from here it's, it's, tough. it's actually a lot thinner it's, it's quite thin in comparison the layout is obviously the same so it's good you can see here how it hasn't got the ambonic logo in it is it is here this to me it feels like it gives you more more of a display somewhat and the bezels are a lot smaller especially at the bottom here in comparison to the M but let's just take a look at what they're like compared to each other side by side just tune it there you go you can see that it's quite a bit thinner than what you would expect really it's not bad there and then again from top view let's compare it to another device significantly smaller than the P the 353p <laughs> as you can see right there I have to keep adjusting this a lot smaller right there And then obviously in terms of thicknesses, <laughs> you can see right here, it's a hell of a lot thinner than the 353P. <laughs> what else have we got? We'll just do one more. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna compare it to the big boy, the 552, yeah. <laughs> just to put some perspective on it, you can see right here it's a hell of a lot smaller. And then obviously in terms of thickness. It's a lot thinner that way as well. Okay. So, let me just... Let's power this device on. First, let me um, clean the screen. Bit less enthusiasm. I'm shaking the you-know-what out of the camera. So we put the game in. So, we're going to boot it up first in the Linux software. The time is 7.50. As of recording this. Let's turn it on. See how long it takes to do up. Hopefully it won't take too long. Yeah, the, the device itself, it feels really premium. I like how it feels. It, that thin, it will definitely make it a lot more pocketable. So that's something worth keeping in mind. I do wish though that these analog sticks were just a little bit more flush in towards the device. They're not as raised as some but I wish it was a bit more, then it would be supremely pocketable. Then they wouldn't snag as much. I mean, look, let's just look. It's not particularly protrudent here, but that could still get snagged on the pocket. But it would have been nice if it was just a little bit more embedded. But anyway, let's have a look and see what's on here. So we've got Vertical Arcade, and this is starting off with the um, Linux, I already said that. Vertical Arcade, so all your vertical games are there. Main. Final Burn, Wonderswan, Capcom, Capcom 2, Capcom 3, MSX, PC Engine, Nintendo Entertainment System, Game Boy, SNES, N64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, Open Boy, yay, love that stuff. You've got your ports, settings over here, right, continue, Master System, Mega Drive, Game Gear, Dreamcast, Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket, there's so many systems on here. PlayStation, which is great. It's just not so great having to talk it. <laughs> PSP, all your games, favorites, and then obviously back to Vertical Arcade. 
so there is a large number of systems as you would normally find on this device i'll be straight i always like the android side so i'm gonna boot it up in there next so we're here we're in android obviously it's got a touch screen display and it feels responsive which is great let's just go here yeah that feels pretty responsive i like that that's good what else i guess oh let me just look at the navigation bar so all of the same stuff that you would find on the previous device which was the 353v you're gonna see that all on the top here so you've got your your button toggler that's what i'm gonna call it the button toggler yeah where if you tap it it will go into sort of a xbox style you tap it again and it will go into like a nintendo sort of style in regards to how the buttons function so that's always good you've got your wi-fi there you've got your bluetooth everything that was seen inside the specs which i showed previously is on here can even mess around with the display and you've got your R button or yeah I'll just call it the Ambenic button when you click that it will flip everything into Ambenic mode but what's gonna happen here is it's gonna do the quick load which I'm gonna forward fast forward through right now it's just compiling the games that we have on here before it gives it its own Ambenic front end And so here's what it looks like when you're in the ambulance bit. Let's just confirm. Oh, still got more to do. All right, so what's going to happen here is uh, RetroArch, which is the back end that it's using, is going to start obviously putting things in order, doing some extractions and stuff like this. All right, we're back. <laughs> it takes a little while for that. It takes a few minutes for it to initialize and do all the extractions. But anyway, here we are. So you've got NES, you've got Master System. PC engine, all the same stuff that you'd see before, but it's all sorted and situated in a, in a nice, easy to understand way. You just press the A button, it will go into whatever games, what have you. You can back out of it pretty easy. When you press select, you can check or find what games you're looking for by year, which is really convenient. So that's pretty cool. Starting off with 1980, 1990, and then into the 2000s now all of the game setting up has been done let's jump into some gameplay the time is 806 we'll start off with some cps3 and this is street fighter first strike so let's see this is a good test to see how the buttons work in regards to fireballs and stuff like this so let's go Okay, who are we picking today? Do you know what? Mm. I like Urien. So he's a mixture of fireball and charge buttons. Or charge. He's a charge character and a fireball character. Hard sitting in this position and playing like this. Fireballs are lit. Look at that. Fireballs are good. Block's good. Combos work well. Hey. Yep. Come on, McCall, you're a bit. So, we already know that anything from PSP and Dreamcast and below, they're gonna run a dream on this system. And the colors look vibrant. As I say, camera's not doing it justice. Buttons work really well. The L and R triggers are not difficult to reach. Maybe it's hand size. I mean, look, the trigger buttons are not stacked. I know some people would rather it that way, but for me, I've been playing handhelds for such a long time. It really doesn't matter where the triggers are placed as long as they're not too obscure, like some devices we've seen. This one is still workable. <laughs> the acting is too funny. <laughs> what is this? Did I? All right, so the analogs work really well here. As you can see, I'm running around with Jill. It's all good. What? What is this? That's all Barry talks about. I mean, look, as you can see here, that works really well. So that's Resident Evil on the Nintendo DS. Let's go to something else. Let's go a Margin Boo. Oh no, not, not Margin Boo, Kid Boo giving problems to people on every platform. 
Kim, yeah, it feels great. Oh, uh, yeah. Come on, yeah, you can see that I've not played this game in a hell of a long time. I used to mess, I used to mash this game out. And I think that's enough for that. I don't want you to see me get beat by this super... Vi oh, there you go, mate. Beat that. So, yeah, that's zombie revenge. So, yeah. That's One that. thing I did almost forget to mention, one of the cool things about this, obviously, it's Linux and Android, but one of the cool elements about Android, if you didn't know, is that when you bring, bring the notification bar down, you can map your own buttons to where you need it to be for whatever Android game you decide to play. You would have to sideload a lot of your Android games because I don't believe as of right now this has any access to the Play Store. So you can map your buttons with that key right there. So yeah, the RG353M. It's a sleek, premium, very well-built device, hella sturdy, Button shake test quick, can barely hear anything. Listen. It looks really good. I mean, even in this deep purple color, I really like that. It feels comfortable and it is, yes, pocketable. Let's have a quick look right here. Look. In my work, in my work trousers, pretty pocketable. I don't have anything bad to say about this particular device. And if I had it my way, literally every device I'd have would be metal ones. You know, starting from the first metal device that I had, which is the mm. the 2AEM, right up until this one. All of these metal devices are built with great quality. But yeah, here it is. Guys, if you like the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. That goes a long way for me. And also remember, the link is also down there for the Ambernick Collections coupon sale so all you have to do is go into the website make sure you use the coupon code sale 11 and it will get you a discounted device guys hope you like the video catch you in a bit peace